Have you ever gotten to the point of your project where you're doing builds and you start naming your builds final, actual final, please work, then only to open them up and you question whether it's the build you just made or an older one? Did you try and fix this by adding a text box in the corner that you'd update before each build, but you inevitably forget and now you're more confused than you were to begin with? And if you're anything like me, you found yourself in this position for a school or a work project. So in this video, we're going to be taking a look at doing an automatic build number and date for your project. Before we jump into the setup, let's talk a bit about how this will work. We're primarily going to be creating a version string that looks like this. The current version of the project, followed by the build date with a hyphen to separate them. And we'll be storing this string in the player settings of our project, so we don't have to worry about an implementation for saving that information elsewhere. The only downside is that we're going to need some code to get that version from our string in the future. And all of this will occur within a custom build pre-process. So it'll be done automatically anytime you build your project. Don't worry if you didn't get all that. We still have the rest of the video to go. So let's get into Unity. At this point, I imagine you already have a project ready to go. As you can see here, I've put together a basic splash screen for a fictional game. To do this, we're going to need a couple of scripts. The first script we're going to be making is an editor script called build version processor. We'll want to ensure that it's in a folder named editor, which prevents the script from being added to our built project. We then need a typical script that we'll call version shower. Of course, you can name either of these scripts whatever you want, but this is what I named them. Now we'll just open up both of these scripts and we'll be starting with the build version processor. And as I mentioned previously, this script will be an editor script, so we'll start by adding the necessary namespaces. The most important ones are going to be these three Unity editor namespaces. These will give us access to the functionality we'll be needing for creating a build process. Next, we'll want to have our script inherit from the interface I preprocess build with report, <laughs> which is quite a lot, but now we're going to need to add a couple of things to our script to use this interface properly. Also, so that Visual Studio will stop yelling at us. We'll start with a public int named callback order that'll be initialized to zero. For interfaces, this needs to be implemented as a property, which explains the lambda expression or the little arrow thing, which is what I usually call it. To finish out the interface, we'll need a public function called onPreprocessBuild that takes one argument of type build report that we'll just call report. At this point, the interface should be adequately integrated. Now let's actually write some code. First, we'll create a private string that's a constant that we'll call initial version and initialize it to 0.0. .0. I primarily do this for clarity, I just don't want a hard coded value hidden in a function somewhere. You may also be wondering why this is a string and not a float. I just found it easier to structure the code since it's primarily parsing a portion of a string, which you'll see more of that in a bit. We'll now create two functions. The first one we'll be making is a private function that returns a string that we'll call find current version. Then we'll create another private function that returns void that we'll call update version that takes in a string argument that we'll call version. We'll then call both of these functions in the pre process build function. We'll call find current version and store the value we're getting in a local variable called current version. Then we pass the string into our update version function. And this completes the overall structure of the script. We can now start filling out our functions. Moving on down to our find current version function, we're first getting the current bundle version within our player settings. This is just going to be the version that you'll find in your player settings below the company and product name. We then want to try and split the string we're getting using the left and right square brackets. This will attempt to split the existing string into three pieces, the text, the version number, and date of the version format I showed you previously. If the split was unsuccessful, which may mean that our current value in our player setting is zero, the string array we're getting will have a length of one. This lets us know that we'll need to use that initial version string instead. We'll be doing that here in this ternary operator, where we'll be returning either the initial version or the portion of the string we managed to split. Now that we have the string for our version, we'll need to parse it to get a number that we can work with. If the parse is successful, we want to add a small value to our version number. I just decided to use 0.1, but you can use whatever iterator value you want. Then we find the current date and format it using one of the many available format specifiers. I decided to use the lowercase d for a short date display. If you're unfamiliar with date time format specifiers, they allow you to input a simple letter that controls how the date is displayed. Visual Studio will actually show you what's available if you're interested in looking into this further. Now that we have all of our values ready to go, let's combine them to create a new string. I like using string.format since it makes it a bit easier to see what variables are being used. We first have our string, then we add curly braces for where we want our variables to be, followed by the variables we want to use. 
so our new version and date. We then implement these variables into the string by putting an index within each of these curly braces. So a zero in the first will correlate to the first variable and a one for our second variable. Finally, let's add a quick debug to write out our current version in the console when we build our project. That about does it for the custom process. Now let's quickly write out our show version script. And this is where the actual programming begins. Well, just kidding. All we're going to be doing is using a wake to get our UI text or text mesh and applying the bundle version from our player settings. I'm using standard canvas text, so I just added the Unity Engine UI namespace to my script as well. And that's it. Let's go back into Unity and set this up in our scene. And all we need to do is go to whatever text element we want to show our version and attach our show version script to it. Now, if we build and run our project, you should see that you're on version 0.01, .01, followed by the date of your project. If we go back into Unity and build our project again, you should now see a 0.02 .02 version for your project. Now, when you're doing your final builds for your project, hopefully this alleviates some of the stress and confusion that comes along with it. If you watch this far, please consider pressing any of those buttons down below or leaving a comment. I'd greatly appreciate it. And that's it for me. I'll see you all in the next one. And a special thanks to all of my wonderful patrons. I honestly couldn't do this without them. And I'd specifically like to thank Todd Andler, Andreas Brillen, Balthazar, George Patterson, and Juan Pyong Choi. Thank you again for all of your continued support.